my name is Sandra Alec. I am an artist, a painter. I experiment with other forms like oxidized copper. I've done etching, drawing all of my life, at least drawing all of my life. I started, I remember, in kindergarten. I wasn't always a practicing artist because I got a job in television in Washington, D.C. during Watergate, bingo. From as far north as my... In 1980, 81, my husband, who was a television journalist, was headhunted for CBS, but the story was they wanted to send him to Moscow. So off we went to Moscow, which was appalling at first, uh, dark, uh, the dingiest place I've ever seen, with the only sh shining bits, a few red flags here and there, if it was a holiday. Everything was darkness to me. Don, my husband, was sent to cover Leonid Brezhnev, and CBS called me, the foreign editor, and he knew me. And he said, well, there's a guy coming in to the Charmetio airport. He's going to get his eyes done. The Russians were very famous for the beginning of laser surgery on eyes. Would you go and cover it? And I said, yes, if you pay me. So he said, done. My husband told me everybody laughed when they heard that. And we got a letter from CBS News saying my husband could not hire me because we were married and that would be nepotism. And he said, I didn't hire her, you did. So we continued to work together for the whole almost three years we were there. I produced and I story edited just as I, I had in my previous jobs. Turned out we worked together very well without divorcing, which is always intriguing. And we, I knew his strengths and he knew mine and we just leaned on each other. In 1983, I met a, a Russian photographer and he knew I loved art and was an artist. He said, would you like to meet some dissident artists? And I said, you bet. Only artists who were part of the union of artists were given the perks of being artists, given studios, supplies. They lived very, very well, but they had to paint something called Soviet socialist realism. These now so-called non-conformist artists did not have any of those advantages. They lived in small spaces and yet kept on working. He eventually took me to one artist studio uh, named Vlad Zhdan, who, when I walked into his little studio, maybe smaller than this, and one little kitchen where he and his mother shared, the walls were full of oil paintings that were amazing. They were so beautiful. and I really would have liked to study with him, or at least I wanted to bring an oil painting home, but I worried about it being confiscated. So I bought a, eight of his drawings, which I could hide in my own work. I didn't hesitate buying the drawings. If he'd had more, I would have, because I knew the risk, because I had a lot of drawing paper about the same size, because it could all go in, and they'd really have to hunt. I loved a painting of his so much, I thought, oh, I could roll it up and maybe, and I, I just didn't risk it. The other artist, uh, the first painting I bought of his was while he was still incarcerated to help, help Tamara, his wife, raise money. So I bought that for oh, maybe five or six hundred dollars, hard currency, which is really uh, hard to come by. And then when he was released, I bought an etching, and I think he gave me one of them. And I would visit him on a number of occasions. And as an artist who likes to sell her work and be seen, when I said, how do you feel that nobody's seeing your work? And he said, oh, if a hundred people like you come to my studio, I would be happy. And that's a good lesson in humility. My goal is to raise as much money as possible for Ukraine. But I opened my own studio, which I was going to do anyway. And, and the, the morning I opened it, I thought, ah, I'm just going to sell everything I have here. And all the proceeds are going to go to assist Ukraine. So I sold 15 pieces of art, which is very unusual during an open studios and raised close to six thousand dollars so i feel pretty good about that you know and i feel no qualms whatsoever about you know selling more if i can i thought huh i have all this russian dissident art it's stored in the basement downstairs it's probably a mess why don't i dig it out and we'll sell it i'd like to see at least the six drawings that illustrate a novel called kotlovan which is considered one of the greatest no Russian novels of the 20th century. I'd like to see them stay together in a collection and hang together where people can see them. One of my reasons for 
taking pleasure, or another of my reasons for taking pleasure in selling this Russian nonconformist or dissident art, is I found it rather ironical that Russian artists should be raising money via me for Ukraine. Uh, since I haven't been able to get in touch with them in spite of all my efforts recently, I'm hoping that it would be, it's okay that they actually go, yeah, well, you know, I just don't know. All of the proceeds, 100%, go on the ground to Ukraine with medical supplies, flak jackets, whatever is needed. And I thought, whatever I can do, I'm going to provide because I, I'm so, I have such admiration for what the Ukrainians are doing now. Perhaps it's because the Russians thought when I spoke Russian I was Ukrainian. I don't know. They did. Surprise, yes. Mm -hmm.